Let us know when we're. I know, but in Seattle, it snowed. Everything stopped. We are snowing. We have to have lunch. We have to have four feet to do anything, right? <laughs> I could have blown it off the car. <laughs> <laughs> we are alive. It's not my rights. Uh, I make a motion to open the meeting. Is there a second? No second. Roll call, Trustee Lightfield. Aye. Trustee Lampier. Aye. Trustee Setzer. Aye. Mayor Palmer. Aye. Motion passes. Okay. Uh, I didn't bring the War and Peace statement with we me. We can do summary. We can do the clips notes. Summary but. is if you're attending online, which we have no one right at the moment, but please raise your hand or put your questions in the q and I don't think respond to chat. Um, and let's just all try to be nice to each other tonight. Okay. And um, is, does anybody have anything to disclose or any conflict of interest? I do not. I do not. I do not. And I do not. Okay, with that being said, um, I'd like to make a motion to go into executive session uh, for the purpose of discussing an employee. Okay. A second. Roll call. Trustee Stetzer. Aye. Trustee Lampier. Aye. Trustee Lightfield. Aye. Mayor Plummer. Aye. Motion passes. Okay. okay. Give us a minute here. Sure. <laughs> Okay, you're good to go. Okay, make a motion. We leave executive session. One second. Roll we'll call, please. Trustee Leggett? Aye. Trustee Lampier? Aye. Trustee Stetzer? Aye. Mayor Palmer? Aye. Motion passes. Okay, is there a motion to? I'll make a motion that we hire Jason Cernus for the position of working foreman for the Department of Public Works at uh, an increase of $2 an hour to his current hourly rate. Starting uh, effective th this, yeah, this payroll. Effective this payroll, thank you. I'll second that motion. We have a second roll call, please. Trustee Lankin. Aye. Trustee Lankier. Aye. Trustee Stetzer. Aye. Mayor Palmer. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Okay. And thank, thanks to Jason for accepting. That's great. Yeah. It's a good fit. Um, so that's effectively you. Yeah, that's, that's what happened. I wasn't sure. Okay. Have a good evening. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you're. Do I need these doors back open? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Next up, Bill Pay. Yep. We do. While we had you together, we did some notes because we like to pay our bills. Seems yeah. like a good reason. Okay. Any questions for uh, Dorothea? Just a, a couple of quick questions. For the last one that came out, um, where, where are we putting the Porter Johns? That's nine hundred dollars in Porter Johns. Do you know where they're? Um, they're they're in under Parks and Rec. I was just curious. Okay. Yeah, and they fall mm -hmm. under Parks and Rec. Okay. Um, and the uh, there's one from uh, Donovan as well. Yep, that that's just maintenance. From, that's maintenance on, on our existing bonds. Right. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, any any questions or is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Second calling. <laughs> the bill pay. The bill pay, yeah. I'm just trying to look for the date mm -hmm. on here, but Okay. Roll call. Trustee Spencer. Aye. Trustee Lampier. Aye. Trustee Lickett. Aye. Mayor Plummer. Aye. Motion passes. I will say that we're paying for the Bobcat in there, and that's something that's being funded out with chips. So yeah. we'll be submitting that very well. We might not see that funding back until March or April. Yeah. I'm looking at that to get that in. Takes a while. Okay. The next thing we had real quick for you, we needed to do a addendum to our project. Because it didn't get picked up by the Builders Association, and normally they advertise this, and we didn't pick it up. And Jennifer and I was really surprised when we had a walkthrough and no one showed. So we pushed yeah. the bid bill date. So we're asking the board to accept the addendum. So we'll be we're going to do an extension. Basically? It's an extension. Okay. We're going to do the walkthrough on the eighth, and then we'll get the bids in January. Since we have time, we can extend it out. I thought when I was reading through this, there is uh, the snow melt system addition too, or is that? That's, that is, the smoke sidewalk is an option on the bed. Gotcha. Okay, because okay, we would like the heated sidewalk. Yeah. We have it over here. If we can continue it over there, right. it makes perfect sense, especially since the seniors like to use that area. 
So if it's affordable. So, but that's not the uh, addendum for this meeting. The, no. the, the extension is the. The date extension, I believe. It's the date extension. The, okay. It's the, um, the option is in the bid only. Gotcha. Okay. It was in the bid as it went uh, out. As it went out. Yeah. No. We're hoping we can afford it. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. It really is so helpful. If I can just have approval on this addendum. Is there a motion to approve the addendum? I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Okay. Is that what we're doing? Do I have to? Okay. <laughs> I'll second. Roll call, please. Trustee Stetzer? Aye. Trustee Lampier? Aye. Trustee Lightgood? Aye. Mayor Palmer? Aye. Motion passes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, now. We'll see. Code discussion. Where did we leave off and where are we picking up? And uh, we talked about 15 and 16. Okay. But it, I don't recall us talking. I don't have any notes on 14. Let me see. 14, it says, my note says, oh yeah, this, uh, Steve will look at this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's back on you, Steve. <laughs> Well, 15 and 16, I wrote both hands. Oh, he's talking yeah. about 14. No, yeah, he's saying 14. 14. I'm, I'm looking at 14, the change from Board of well, Trustees to Building Inspector. And that was the one on the dating, I thought. Isn't that the one? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 So I thought we were leaving it alone. Because the board view, the trustees wanted to review over if they were going to cross the sidewalk or a, or a roadway. Well, I still have right. Steve look at this. My note, so that's um, uh, 176, 16, and 18. You yeah, yeah, that's my note on that is research more. Yeah, that's that, that's yeah, Steve have. will look at this research. That's what I have. Okay. I'm, not I'm, not sure what, I'm not sure what there is to research. I don't know. I mean, I think what you guys did. Why did you say that? You must have been tired, right? It's late. Yeah, the part I know, I thought you wanted to review over because it's as if they're going to cross a roadway or a sidewalk. I mean, if they dig in a yard or into the right of way. I think it was to see what other municipalities were doing. Was that it? No? Well, we both have these no's, so I'll circle back with you and we'll take okay. a look. You know, because well, we both, something came up on it. I mean, it, there was mm -hmm. something, something brilliantly discussed. <laughs> yeah, let's circle back. I mean, I, I really think it's not much to research. You either are going to continue with a loop. Yeah, I don't know why we have that. Or you're not going to continue on the loop. Yeah, like I said, I thought we said the board still wants per view over it, and that was the end of it. I, don't, I, don't, I thought that's what we said, too, but I don't have oh. notes that say that we said that. I don't have that note. Neither does Justin. But there really isn't, I mean, if you look at it, all the saying that you guys want to be able to wear if they're going to cross the cuts, low, low, or a sidewalk. Is that the curb cuts? Right? No, curb cuts or something. This is if somebody is saying that they're doing utility work or something. And they want to run in. And they're okay. cutting anybody, across. Anybody messing with public sidewalk curb and all that stuff. So what's the harm in having the Why would building we, inspector? Yeah, he would know. Because, because I would have no more knowledge than any of you. I was going to say, yeah. we would just probably right. ask you about it. Yeah. Right. But my thought is that if these are your side okay i see okay. what you're saying the larger and, and steve is there to advise the board okay about what you want now if you want to say fine let steve do it that's you know i'm not saying that's the wrong right. decision but it, mm -hmm. you should think about the fact that these are yes. the village's sidewalks mm -hmm. and so choice. it could be i mean i'm just trying to think of well that's a different case because i was thinking um you could do the call up you know, he could he could notify the board of it, and then the board ha has you know Least five no, days to review. Just saying, or you know, call it up. Yeah, if they were going to cut through something, I'm getting Scott Herder involved. In yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm not taking that uh, on myself. <laughs> well, why don't we keep it I'm just thinking that. Yeah, you know, there are times that I can recall in the history here. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Where you have okay. wanted to. Just be involved in this. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. curb cuts. Well, this isn't a curb cut. Well, that would be a planning board issue. Yeah, curb cuts are some really different. Yeah. That would be, first of all, you're not going to get any curb cuts. But, Give but, us an but, example but, precisely what this would be so we all understand the difference. I think we're talking about existing curbing and all. I mean, mm -hmm. they're village, you know, they're village resources. Come up to you. Mm -hmm. So, but give us an example of a project that happened with this. Would this be uh let's see when the 
the resident on Fountain Avenue wanted to tie into a touch basin? No, well, so what is it? Talk, tell me what, give yeah, us an I example. Yeah, I it could have come to the board. I mean, technically, it, it, it could have. I mean, but they, I mean, they had went through and, and stopped. And, and it won't have been done in other residences the same way. Okay, so what would a project be that like this that would come before the board? Wasn't there one in front of Village Hall with a pipe that was um, excavated there? Yeah. 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 So yeah. something like that. Yeah. Just so we all. Uh, you know, think about tying into a sewer. So just okay. to be clear, then, if we were to say it still needs to come before the board, if there's some something that has to occur because we're fixing something, it's kind of an emergency situation. We have to call a special meeting in order to get permission in order for them right. to dig. So there's right. again the process, the length yeah. of the process for the applicant. Am I correct that it'll affect that? Yeah, well. I don't know if you'd have to have a special meeting or if I would just have to email the board. You know what I mean? Yeah, email all the, the, the members. The and board can't make any decisions no, without, right, without meeting. a meeting. Yeah. That's why, if we, that's why I'm thinking if, if we change this to have it with, you know, to the building inspector, if you were to make that decision, you, part of this would be to notify the board and they would have, you know, 48 hours to call it up. You know what I mean? If, they, if there was an issue with it, I, because I'm thinking, for example, in other places where I've lived, and this was an issue with fences, okay? Um, fences would never go before a board. They would just go directly through the building inspector. And the building inspector would notify the board as soon as the approval was made, and they would have three days to call it up based on the fact that there was, they thought, thought there was a violation of code. You can't just arbitrarily call it up. And it would um, be a mechanism of oversight, essentially. You say, this is, this is the fence permit I gave out. Any problems, let me know. Mm -hmm. I guess. You know, but this isn't quite the same thing. No. So yeah, Lily. Thank you. Um, I'm listening to Jeff, and I'm also trying to review this historically. Mm -hmm. And th the way I'm thinking about this is that um, the village um, Trustees have jurisdiction over village property, which are sidewalks and, and uh, in some cases, roadways. I cannot see an emergency situation that would occur with some of these storm, uh, you know, storm drain that would, that would mean that, the, that we, the village could not take action or that the, whoever was in charge could not take action unless the board met. I, I don't see that as a... you see any circumstance? I don't see that as yeah, a, that's a question for him, whether whether or not you got a, a water line that goes right under the sidewalk. Or a sewer. I'm thinking they would deal with the situation to stabilize the situation if it was an emergency. Oh, you know what? And they've done, remember Del Monte, how many times? They deal with it, right? They just deal with it because it's an, it's an emergency. But so at the end of the day, we don't want to, do it. I don't think that we want to um, hand over the, the administration of something that belongs to the trustees to the building department. So what is the differentiation then between the emergency? I mean, you know, like, I don't know. I'm just, well, I, what if you, I don't know. What if you have a situation where one of these pipes blow and it's flooding situation? Oh, I think you react. I think, you you know, I don't think they require a meeting for that. That's. Well, I mean, you would probably do a, you wouldn't do a permanent fix to them. Right. Right. Del Monte. I'm, 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 don't look at me. I'm, you know. Well, Del Monte, that's what they would do. Right. In an emergency situation, yeah. you need to take care of it. I'm just thinking. But, but, no, I see where you're going with it. I do. It could involve village funds and the accessing of village from public money. And so I think that all involves the trustees. It's like a situation out here when this went. Mm -hmm. and if it, we didn't have a, it was a slow, gradual situation. Mm -hmm. You're able to handle it. But if it was an immediate situation, you would have an yeah, emergency. Plan. You would have to call an emergency anyway. Yes. So you'd have, you to, have to deal with it. Meeting. You can so get an emergency a meeting within 24 hours. Okay, okay so then let's not change it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Leave it. Leave it. Okay. All right. I have a <laughs> so, Steve, thank you for your research and review. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So that's done. <laughs> um, 15 and 16 were purely reference. Yeah, we already did yeah. it. Already yeah, did that I have checked off there. Right? Yep. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So 17. 
Oh, is that where we left off? No, this is a new Did one. Can we do this? Where, this, where this are we? The yard definition. No, 17 was in there. Yeah. Yeah, it says review and discussion. 17 was in my original list. No, it's there, but I'm just saying it's, I have found review and discussion. Hmm. Well, the, the problem where this came, where this came to an issue was the pavilion. Yes, I remember that. That's because right. Because there is, you know, you technically can't put an accessory structure in the, you know, where it is if it's a residential lot. But commercial, I mean, what do you define a front yard in a commercial property? Can we, uh, which, I, I don't have a code reference. No, it's under definition. It's the yard definition in the code. Okay, let me pull that up. Okay. Yes. So we've got definitions um, under 210.41.1 for yard front, yard rear, yard side, right? So yeah. we're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm just curious if we should, if somehow it should reference, you know, reference it as being residential definition, but not commercial. Mm -hmm. Because of the nature of siting of some of our buildings. Right. Yeah. Well, the commercial so, properties not have yards? Well, this came up with, with the Collins Pavilion yeah. project, right? Uh, so really how do you define I mean, how do you it? Some of them sort of do, don't they? I'm Shane Blake. Really? How would you define a front side or backyard? Yeah, take a, take a look at. Um, what about the yellow? The does Aladdin's have a yard? Uh, no, they have no green space. But the ones next to Aladdin, the yellow, the yellow ones, um, the real estate. Mm -hmm. I'm blanking on the name of it. Is that their property or is that a canal property? The grassy little knoll. Oh, coming like down to the canal? Yeah. So, you, so now it you're saying the yard is on the canal side. Part of it's part of it's part 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 canal. Part of it's staying and part of it's canal. Right, but it's green, Marie. What would you call that? So the yard side's on the canal yeah. and not facing the street. I have to so which side is the yard? Depending on how you look at it, you would call, you would call the waterfront front air mm -hmm. in a lot of places. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, that's a fair point. That's why and then the, the But the entrance to the building is on the... Typically, your entrance I know, is it, it, where it, your yard is. Actually, when they call a waterfront, they leave your front yard. So now so, the, the road would be your backyard. Well, I guess my my concern. <laughs> so I, I was on the planning board when we talked about that, and I remember yeah. some of those difficulties. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if we ever got to a satisfactory resolution on that particular issue. I guess my concern is that if we um, uh, change this, uh, some of the commercial properties on State Street, I think, do have things that are more yeah. easily definable as yards. So I wouldn't necessarily, I, I think we'd have to look at the other cases to see how it impacts. So we take each case on its yeah. own merit. If, I feel like if there's a danger in just removing that, because then yes. you would unintentionally change some of that. So the commercial properties, I do have yards. Well, I have done further review and discussion from the last time, so we thought you're right. I mean, we need to, not everything, is reflected no properly. Yeah. Jack, I, I think it's, it's it. a much more complex than just changing, allowing the well, what would definition of yard in the commercial district. What would, we, what, would, what would we want to do with this, Steve? I would find that the, the, the definitions be under residential, not you know referencing commercial. But as he said, you got certain properties right. on State Street that mm -hmm. may you, you may still want the regulations for what front yard and, and side. Yeah, they definitely have yards. Uh, I guess what I'm asking, where would you make the change? How would you how would you express it in terms of what you're looking at? In, in the how would we what's I the language? No, it was just a it was just a suggestion based on the fact that we had the issue yeah. with the pavilion. So I didn't have yeah. any, I didn't have a solution per se. Okay. And it doesn't sound Justin, it sounds like from your experience on the planning board, you all didn't have a I satisfactory. Can't, I can't recall, and I recall a lot of going back to the same issue many times, and I can't recall the mutual resolution. So, um, I mean, we could potentially try going zone by zone and seeing if there's a definition that fits for that district, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. Yeah, it's not, it may not be worth all that, you know, for, for the simple, like we got through it with a yeah. right. You know what I mean? Yeah. By, by the way that I, the way I defined it when we did it. And it really was the same thing like with the last thing with, you know, when we talked about the other um, one, it's, it's, it's case by case, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So we don't necessarily have to change it. Is there, um, okay, we're saying unoccupied for front yard. Um, does it change if you say that that's, a, so we say, does unoccupied, is there a different term for unoccupied? Because unoccupied seems like it could either represent paved or uh, something that's always been grass. 
could you say that a, a yard is not just on occupied, on occupied space, but on um, developed? <laughs> but see, see here's, the, here's the thing. We actually, Justin uh, Leister put a, a game, sent me an email in regards to this mm -hmm. one. Um, because, you know, technically, because you, you've got to be careful because that front yard is not just the front yard to the side of the house. The front yard is the whole width of the house. So when you're talking about parking or, or driveways and that stuff, that, that driveway extends into mm -hmm. the front yard. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's. I know when we had discussed, I'm remembering a, 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 an application on Bowton Avenue. This is years ago. Uh, I won't get into the details, but generally it was the same issue where she wanted to extend the driveway in front of the house. It's one thing when it's next to the house, but when it extends to the front facade of the house, and that was the discussion of the planning board at the time, and it was it was found to be not not according to code. That non pervious surface uh, was not permitted. Anything, there isn't anything in the code that says you can't. The only thing it says in the code that you can't park on, on in the front yard on not on a driveway. I thought There's there was a oh, oh, that's not percentage true. of uh -huh. pavement, though, wasn't there? Do we, do you remember it? I, mean, I, don't think I thought there was a percentage of how much you're. For development, yeah, there is. There's there's a, you're not permitted to front it. Well, there's always a parking percentage, percentage, percentage of your yeah. yard can only be covered by paint. Yeah, that's what I'm talking right. about. Yeah. Okay, it's 12%. Yeah, you can't park in your front yard. Right, and well, also if somebody puts on an addition that's too large. And if you read the code, it says you can't park in the front yard unless on an approved driveway. Right, so mm -hmm. I, I've been having, I'm not going to call it an argument. I want to talk about, say it as a discussion mm -hmm. with the not chairperson of the um, Planning and Zoning Board regarding this very issue, regarding the paving of front, the front setback right. of a residence. That I, my, my memory said that it was not permitted right. you, you not to pave the area in the front setback of the home. Okay, so I, I'd like a story. <laughs> so, so we're still sort of coming back to the yard issue and do we just leave it? Because there's so few to cases. Compare what Justin's saying, it you know? would be best to leave it rather than confuse the issue, and, and then take it. I don't see it really coming up again because there's no other. I mean, the pavilion pavilion was in. It's kind of a one off. You know what I mean? A one off. Yeah. yeah. Could we yeah. recognize the resident who's come here? Oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. Robert Corby, Southern Washington Avenue. I just want to reaffirm, you know, when we did the comprehensive plan, it was the clear intent not to allow parking in front yards. And, and I think, you know, that's a fundamental precept of walkable planning is preserving the streetscape and the historic setbacks of the houses. And I think we've all been sort of disappointed to see what happened on State Street because now we're going to end up with a situation with cars parking in the front yard, which is exactly what we were trying to avoid. It's dangerous. It's also uh, degrades the overall streetscape and walkability of the street because those cars have to push back out right onto the sidewalk. Thank you. Thanks so much. Steve, so, I'm looking at the MUE, I'm sorry, Mayor. No, no, just uh, MUEC, and it's, it's a zero feet minimum front yard for a non residential use. Right, you don't have to have a front yard for a non residential use. Right, right. So why was the what was the problem with the building? It was whether it was a side yard or, or the front yard, what it was considered. An accessory you know? structure based on, uh, are you saying that it was, the issue was uh, whether or not accessory structure was allowed dependent on which yard it was in? Yeah. And, uh, I think it's kind of a unique situation. I think I agree with everybody. We should kind of just, you know, <clears throat> we're good. Right, so as, far as, uh, as far as know, what, what Bob said, mm -hmm. in, in regards to State Street, that, that's a unique situation because you, you've got a two family there mm -hmm. where if you have two different mm -hmm. people there, somebody has to back out to let the other person out. Mm -hmm. That becomes mm -hmm. a huge safety issue. Same thing on Bell Mountain, same mm -hmm. issue. You know what I mean? But it, 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 State Street's worse though. State Street so, as the speed. Okay. So that was, a, that was a decision that has been made by another yeah, board. Right. Yep. We're here now. Yep. Doing our we don't want to yep. code update, so appreciate the input from everybody. Um, okay, so moving on, so we're at item number 18. Mm -hmm. 
Sorry, just to clarify, we're going to leave the, the last one, right? We're not going to make yeah, the Yeah, it's a right step. Now, right? yeah. yes. And um, next one is just purely a reference issue to the proper code. Oh, yeah, the NEC doesn't exist, right? Yeah. So that that's just cleaning up the, that reference. Uh, if I may, I, I Googled this one, um, and so I'm certainly not an expert, and, and my Googling might have been wrong. Does this mean the 2020 NEC? Because my, my note here says um, it seems the NFPA 70 exists, but it's more related to safe work practices, whereas NEC is the code to follow. Um, so should we, instead of saying NFPA 2020, is it actually the 2020 NEC? Yeah, I, I, the way I read it, it, did, it was supposed to reference the NFPA 2020, not the NHC. Okay. I'll look at that. If we could just clarify that, I, yep. I, I don't see a... Okay, so the action on this is um, further clarification from yep. Steve. Oh, but it's called. Yeah, if, if it's yeah. NEC 2020 or NFPA 2020. Yeah. Okay, so we're moving on to 19, please. And let's see. It, now, oh, this is the one that it, where I have that says, Steve, please review other codes. Number 19? Yeah. That was the 18? Yeah, the 18 of vehicle storage one. Yeah. To take a look at how, it, what other municipalities are doing. Well, that was the that was what I the note. Most municipalities don't have a reference that you can oh. park on a certain length vehicle. Okay. The, the problem was with huge. this, it the was problem huge. with this is you have, huge you have multiple businesses in one. here with trucks that are way bigger than the 18 foot. If you own a, a crew cab pickup truck with a commercial plate on it, you're technically illegal in the dark. To park. When, when I looked this up, okay. yeah, my truck's my truck's 21 feet. Your your pickup, so my, not for a delivery, gram, but no. to park. Yeah. But you're not parked in a residential neighborhood. I mean, yeah, you're not I, living. I am. I mean, I, I but it, I mean, it's not just residential. This references the village. It is that. Okay. It doesn't say just residential now. Is no. your truck okay. commercial vehicle? Yeah. 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 So we're going to have to tell you. Is, okay. We're going to have to tell you right now. Yeah. Well, our truck, our truck is illegal. Yeah, the yeah. DPW yeah. trucks yeah. are illegal. Robert's Kitchens, Messer Flooring, Community uh, Center, yeah. um, the church. I mean, everybody has vehicles over 18 feet. And technically, they are all illegal. I understand. Oh. Nobody's made a complaint. So you're no. saying. Well, I would, but, I would just say so reference it to 22 feet because it encompasses pretty much everybody's box trucks that, and everybody within it, like a crew cab truck in a village. Like you said, if, if you want to truly follow the code, like anybody with a crew cab truck is illegal in the village. Well, I mean, our code should reflect really what, what needs to happen. The modern, the modern vehicle. But, like you said, um, towpath, bike shop, their vehicle is illegal. Well, it's just about anybody that's bringing in. Mm -hmm. Anybody with a that. commercial van or, or truck are all technically illegal in the building. Because vehicles have changed so much, too, yes, you know? That, I, I am I mean, remembering this was a very long involved, and I think it involved a lawsuit as well, regarding the parking. And my, my, my Jeff Buff, it was on Rand Place. Oh. The individual had a camper van that he had, a Winnebago, the purchased and was parked in his front. Well, we're we're I'm just saying lawsuit. that this right, is what that, precipitated all It's a completely different code. Right? As far as the okay. recreational vehicle, it's its own separate entity. You can't park them without being screened and behind the front line of the house. Right. The store. This, this is a commercial vehicle this is a commercial that's in vehicle. use. To, you know. I don't think that was a lawsuit. I think that was a justice court enforcement thing. Uh huh. Which is like a lawsuit, but I don't, I don't think it was on Article 78. So I'm trying to figure out the utilitarian nature of this thing. So you're, if you live, if you're, you own a construction company and you live in the village, you can't park your car out there right now if you've got one of those big. In your own, and it does, in your own driveway to leave. Yeah, yeah. But if you own a food truck, same thing. There's a well, food truck. You have to. Food, I don't. Yeah. That, that's a little, might be a different. You know what I mean? And that's it's actually why exactly. this came up. So to be honest with you, Buku or food truck was. Oh, I remember that because he lives. He wanted to park it at his, his 
um, residence on Grove Street, on Grove. and I got a complaint, and I had to make them take it out of there. Yeah, see, I think this is going to take a public hearing. Yeah, because a food truck, give one second here, please. Mm -hmm. A food truck is really kind of a different entity. It's like, like a business. business. Well, what yeah. would be a difference in a food truck or somebody who's running a landscape different? What yeah. about the well, like the trailer that's on um, Sutherland? Oh, that, yeah. Is that? Um, what, the van or yeah. anyone that might ticket regularly? Regularly. Yeah, so is he ticketing it because of this provision or because it's a tr it's not connected to a well you can't park I think at a point here you can't leave it overnight. Okay. It's like we're in that we're in that mode right now. Right now leave it. Oh yeah. right. No, but before that. Yeah. It's okay. still an issue. Okay. But that's not that's something separate yeah. because it's a trailer. Or still would fall under the eighteen foot, yeah. but a commercial okay. trailer, you know, I mean that's 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 a tough one because he has a very shallow driveway yeah. that comes in late at night, so he's worried about backing that trailer into his right. driveway past the house. Right. So this would, but correcting this would help that situation as well. Well, it yeah. wouldn't help in the roadway. It would only help in the driveway. Okay. It would allow him to park his, his, it his, is, in his own driveway without being illegal. It still would not allow him to park in a road and leave it overnight. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, Bob. <coughs> You know, the whole gist of the comprehensive plan and the last two comprehensive plans was to, you know, make our code, our policies, and our streetscape walkable. Um, you know, there's divergent opinions on standards as they've changed over the years. Trucks have gotten bigger to see the same. But communities that aspire to be walkable have stuck with traditional standards to keep a small level of detail and provide a level of safety scale that benefits bicyclists, pedestrians, and everybody else that uses our streets. I think we shouldn't be designing our code for, for one problem. That's what a use variance is for. And I think we should continue to try to design standards. <coughs> Let's not let the trucks design our village. Let's let our standards uh, make the trucks an anomaly, which they are today. And if necessary, they could always go to the ZBA and get a variance for a special project. Thank you. Okay, so. Um, Which would mean you'd have to make, I'd have to go over to every commercial yeah. business in this village to make a variance. Well, in other words, I mean, I think we're looking at a situation that isn't like a one off. Right. You well, know? This, so you're, you, no, you wouldn't have to go to every business, right? Because this is strictly commercial businesses parked at residents in residential areas. Right. No, so we're no, not it's just about. residential areas. It's That's not the way it's written. That's what the purpose says right here in all residential districts and on property. Oh, I'm not looking at the whole thing. So let me go back. Yeah, along. it's 150 4A. Oh, it says oh, wait. commercial okay. vehicle. And then it goes on and it says in any residential district, yep. unless temporarily, so you can park it temporarily, or with the limited construction project, sales, delivery. So this is specifically the situation where you've got a. Um, uh, a vehicle that's parked permanently, like a food truck in somebody's residential driveway. And it seems like our code prohibits that. And I think that's a discretionary call on the part of the board if you want to change it. So what's the, how, how long is temporarily? I don't remember what the time frame is temporarily. We have that defined. Yeah. Okay, I mean, you know, just so that's defined as well. The like temporary the or something. Is it yeah. temporary for two years? You know, you know what I mean? Like, how do we know? I mean, it, so then you'd have, if you want to permanently, have it parked in your driver, you have to come to get a permit for it. I mean, the, the thing is, th this is, experience. this is interesting too, because we, it seems that we had one issue where there's a food truck parked in a residential driveway and we actually got a complaint about it. So to me, that would indicate maybe we actually don't want to change the code to accommodate that scenario unless we want complaints about every single one that we've already changed the laws to allow. I'm just looking at something. I don't think I, I don't like it as a I mean, drive. Is it a car. question of whether a truck requires a commercial license have to do with the size of the truck? Right. Well, no, no, because that, it depends on the use and how you register. You know, I mean, it, it, it's really you can you you can if you have the proper seats register your like a crew cab as a residential, you know, your regular residential, or they can have you. Right, registered as a commercial vehicle. I mean, I guess, I guess, if you, you know, people 
I, I don't know how you go after him with a food truck, but not somebody else with a crew cab truck in their driveway that's longer than I required. Because the crew cab, if the crew cab truck is used for commercial purposes as like AJ construction on the side. Well, it doesn't matter if you're, it is a commercial play down. But I, don't, but I don't think that's what that, this, this is intended for. I know it's not what it's intended for, but if you're going to take the letter of the law, yeah, well, it's okay. a commercial vehicle. Then, well, it, it depends on what you interpret, you interpret a commercial vehicle as. I bet there's not a definition in the code, but. Okay, if you leave it at my discretion, then I'm fine with it. I mean, it says in well, the no, no. I mean, you have to make a determination. What is a commercial vehicle? Is it is the sole requirement that it be licensed as a commercial vehicle, or is it a requirement that it be used as a use used in a commercial business or commercial purpose? It's defined in here already. Commercial, oh, there is. Yeah, any vehicle designed for that or used in one. conjunction with any business, trade, entity, or event other than residential use. All right. So I mean, the, then the board's question is: Do you want commercial vehicles longer? Vehicles that are used as commercial longer than 18 feet in residential driveways or you know wherever. Which Part B already says one commercial vehicle, which is not regulated, you know, under subsection A, yeah. may be parked right. outside on private property in a residential district. Provided. Yeah, I'm not looking to change the. the no, the only thing just, I was looking was changing the length. Yeah, so you're saying. Accommodate for a modern truck. At least that's a good point, right? So the you know, crew cab is a commercial vehicle, but the. And it's a little bit longer than 18 feet, but the GWPR is less than 10.5. So I'm not sure if that's okay or not. So, in other words, if we're just saying because of modern, more modern vehicles, like somebody at some point came up with 18 feet, like, okay, 18 feet, that's right, what the vehicle is. probably an average pickup truck before they started doing crew Before they did all the other aspects and, of those yeah. trucks. So you're just saying, this is sort of just changing the length a bit by four. Well, yeah. Roughly, like I said, my truck is 21 foot. 21 foot mm -hmm. inches, technically. So if I, have to hit I guess if we long. just change the length, I mean, we're not we're not altering anything else. I see where you're going with this, because if you look at Part B, right, mm -hmm. it still is allowed. If you you know you live in the village, you your construction business or whatever, and you have right. your truck. Well, that was maybe fine when most of them were 18 feet, but now you get the new truck. And now all of a sudden, every every time you parked in your house, now it's illegal to do that because your truck has more, has three more feet this, on it. Um, That's where we're going. Is a mixed use with residential? Mm -hmm. uh, Pardon me? Pickle factory? It's not a residential district, though, is it? I thought it was a... a so no, I don't know. I don't think it's listed in the residential district use, residential districts. So you're just saying He's doing this, this is committing to not park in residential neighborhoods. I think that requires a full carry. Food trucks to me seem so different, and I'm, I'm, yeah. I don't know how we would make that because it, I mean, it's it's you're operating a business out of it. It's all, do you know what I mean? It's, I don't understand what the difference between I would, A uh, and B is. I mean, I, I don't know what a, I don't know what a commercial vehicle is that not would not be regulated by A. Yeah. I don't know what that is. What is that? When it says not regulated by A, does it mean does mm -hmm. it not fit the definition of right. A or how? Right. Is it? Yeah, that's yeah. what it would be. Okay, so then it could but look be at all this. twenty feet, but less than ten five. So if the if the F what I'd like to do is allow an F-250 that has a landscape logo on the side, but not allow a mobile kitchen. <laughs> but that's, you're operating, don't kitchen. you think the distinction, I agree with you, and I'm, I'm right there with you, don't you think the distinction with a food truck is that you are literally operating a business in that vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. But not out of your driveway. But you're not operating it out of your pickup truck. You're just taking your truck, but you're, you're using it. If you're not operating the, the food truck 
wow in your driveway. It's not about that. It's about, it's about the use of use of the truck. Yeah, okay. It might the code might do that because it looks like you've got okay, so with the F two fifty you've got something that's just over the length limit. Um, but the GWVR actually fits in the criterion B. But then if you take that same large pickup and you build a kitchen on the back of it, you're probably going to be over that weight limit. Oh, the so weight no longer. So we've already essentially done what we're trying to so do. So maybe the weight limit. Because so the food truck is covered, is what you're saying. No, the food truck, would, the pickup would be allowed. Right. Based I, on no, but I'm saying but that the, food the truck issue of is the not food allowed. Truck. Right. The code already does what we're. Yeah. Maybe, if we don't change you know, it, yeah. If somebody has a situation like the landscape truck is two feet longer, yeah. can come to the board for a variance, then we're dealing with it on a case-by-case -case basis, and we can look at the surrounding situation. If we change the entire code... We're not changing the entire code. But if you change the code, you're, you're just allowing taking, the food truck. We're just, we're just talking about... The, no, not necessarily. Even if we change the length, is what Justin was just explaining, right. it, we're still covered. I hear where you're going. Food trucks are still... Yeah, if you just change the length, you're still covered on not allowing a food truck to yeah. sit in the yard. Yes. But even if we don't change the length, based on what B says, the gross vehicle it's a weight. commercial vehicle which is not regulated by A, so that would be the F-250, mm -hmm. which doesn't, which is longer than the length of the mm -hmm. A. So then you go down to B and you start reading the criteria, and the last, let's say the landscape owner owns the pickup, the F-250, uh, you go down to criteria two, it's parked in a legally permitted driveway, um, three, the GWVR is under 10,500 pounds. Somebody um, but it's saying one, so it's one commercial vehicle which is not regulated by A. So right. it's so the regulation, the regulation is at. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah I see what you're saying. Because okay. it's longer than 18. Feet. Okay, I've got something. What if we just put food truck in A? Listed as one of the vehicles that can't be parked there. Food truck. We put the I think it's already not allowed though, because when you go down to, if you do the same test for B, well, you, you go to A. But, but no, I think you're right, Justin. I, I, B, B takes away and allows you that one pickup truck that's yes. over 18 feet, right. and, and that's your personal business. Yes. I didn't, I didn't kind of catch that, man. But I think you're right. It says one commercial vehicle, which is not. Regulated by subsection A. Maybe so, perhaps, so I think we're good. Yes, I think so. No, we're not. We no, we're not. Because I'll put food truck in section if A. You, if you have a vehicle that's over 18 feet, end of story. Not allowed. No, because it says one commercial vehicle which is not regulated right, right. by subsection so, A. So it's got to be under Read the first clause, feet. the very first clause. That's all you need to read to understand what Jeff's saying. No commercial vehicle having an overall length in excess of 18 feet. And then it goes on right, to but say. Then the, but then B says one commercial vehicle which is not regulated by A, right. saying it's an exemption. You can have an exemption for no, 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 no. vehicle. No, it says, Steve, it says one commercial vehicle which is not regulated by subsection A. So stop. One commercial vehicle which is not, does not have an overall length in excess of 18 feet. You know, it, that's, that's, it's that's one, the that is not bound by A. Okay, so Jeff, you're saying that A regulates it because it prohibits it. So right. therefore it does fall under A. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the way I don't know. Why wouldn't we put food truck? It says tow truck, bus, step van, oh. put in food truck in A. If you don't do anything. Okay. If you don't do anything, then you come to the the, the, plan, the Zoning Board of Appeals for a variance, an area variance. Not a use variance, it's an area variance. Well, why would. Okay, so let me no, phrase it a different way. Keep going there. Keep going. I'm sorry. I mean, I just. No. I don't care. I mean. When would we ever allow a food truck to be parked in a residence? When would we ever want that in our village? No. So no. why wouldn't we put it in A? Add it in. Well, you're already covered by. Bus, step van, freight van, flatbed, state Are we, we, Just as long as we're covered. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't I mean, there, it, is, it, is a, it is a van, freight van, step van. I mean, they're all, it, it is covered under that. Where's that prohibition, Steve? Pardon? Where is in A? A says bus, step van, Where it van, itemizes. Van, flatbed, state well, well, okay. Yeah. So you're covered under food. Truck, okay. And, you're, yeah. and you don't have to specifically call out food. Truck. Okay. But we still haven't covered the issue of a Ford F, whatever you just said. <laughs> That's too long. I don't know what we're talking yeah. Ford um, either. Uh, those are long. You're saying those are 21 feet. So right now you couldn't have that in your driveway. So we're back to the original thing. If it's commercial, if it's a private, if it's registered 
Uh, right, but most people who yeah. most of the people who buy those are buying because it's of it's the true. law, the tax incentive yeah. to buy a big truck. Why can't we just do it on a case by case basis? How often is that going to happen? Well, anyway, so if it's, I still think you focus on the use. Mm, okay. Is the truck used for commercial purposes? Trucks used for commercial purposes are prohibited. They could come for an area variance, or you could change the code. I would just change the code. I mean, I think it's just a, it's a fact of, you know, as you say, modern equipment. You know, somebody came up with 18 feet because they're going, well, now they're 18 feet. We better put in 18 feet. And now we're saying, frankly, you know, when you get these larger trucks, they're, they're no longer 18 feet. I mean, I think it's just a, a matter of practicality rather than to have somebody to keep trying to come in for a variance just to park yeah. that truck. Yeah. Let's say that, and then the mm -hmm. village, let us say that you have this 20 foot truck, which is permitted, mm -hmm. but your driveway oh, mm -hmm. is 17 feet long. Mm -hmm. So they're allowed to park over the sidewalk? No. And no. they say, they, oh, they, that's a violation of code. They would never be allowed. Well, okay. that's what I'm saying. But if, if, you, if they say, look, my truck is permitted, it's in the code. It's still well, a violation of parking ticket. They, they violated they a different code. Yeah, it would be completely <laughs> they, different. Yeah, they'd be ticketed. And, and, of course, the only worry is what happens when trucks get to be 22 feet. There and that's are. the direction they're going. But can we, it, it's not the, the owners of these vehicles right now, the way tax law is written, if you own a business, you, getting mm -hmm. a sedan doesn't do you any good. You have to buy a truck in order to get the, the okay. benefits. Yeah. So, so more people are buying these huge trucks, which is an issue all around. Mm -hmm. But what do we do in the meantime when you own a construction business or you own a woodworking company or a landscaping company and you try to drive your vehicle home at night and can't park in the driveway? And if your driveway is too short, you wouldn't be allowed to park it there anyway because it's over the sidewalk. So um, I'm not happy about how big trucks are. I don't know that we can penalize the people who own a woodworking company or whatever. Um, I just see this as a practical matter. I think it's a practical matter. I don't like it either. Yeah. I'm not a big fan. I have a little bitty car, but this is the reality. And I think back when this was written, 18 feet was the reality. And nothing more than that. I, I don't, yeah, you know. Well, the choice is either they come for a variance or you change you sign up a area variance or you change the code. Yeah. What are the other? I can't imagine if you're running a business and you just buy your truck and then all of a sudden you've got to come in for a variance to park your truck in your driveway. I don't know. I think I, I that's say, just, I I just adding a whole other I didn't say one was better than the other. I just said. No, I understand. You have two those, options. Yeah. Those are the choices. Yeah, yeah. I gotcha. Yeah, I, I guess it looks like an F2, so a common truck is used for somebody who owns a landscaping company. It might end up being just over 22 feet if you get an extended okay. bed or something, right? Yeah. Um, the weight on that is going to be like around 7,500 pounds or something. Right, so you're only yeah. weight. You are. So I wonder if you can just change the code to allow so that along with just the weight of that kind of vehicle. So, so you, take the length off and just go by weight? You, you could add, you could change the length to 22 and a half feet and then say the weight is like 8,000 pounds, which is just above the weight for that kind of a truck. So therefore, if you've got anything else built on top of it, you know, then like you a come food in cart or whatever, then it doesn't, the code doesn't allow that still. It would have to be a variance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's the way to do it, but with both. You're saying with, with the weight, adding the weight. Oh, no. I think adding the weight prohibits having the pickup truck with the food cart built on top of it. Which I guess yeah, that's is the great. thing I don't. Yeah, yeah. yeah you like a food truck. A food truck was thirteen five. Well, food trucks usually step pans anyway. Right. right. I'm that's just saying that's right. That was over both ways, length and. Yeah, weight. it's already covered as you said. Yeah, we leave everything else in. We're just saying we're going to add. The, the weight and the, the and extra the feet 22 22 feet 22, 22, 22 something yeah i would say i would say 22 and a half and 8,000 pounds yeah i think does that's that make sense to you guys so it's going to read no commercial vehicle it shall have an overall length in excess of 22 and a half feet with a weight and then number three no no you're going to do it you're going to do an a no, the weight comes down in, in number three. You no, know, he sees that. He's just trying to read through no, no, for, no. for A, no, it doesn't. right? No, it doesn't in three. Yeah. But B only comes in if... Oh, okay, yeah, right, no, right, right. So we want to move it up. Or Thank having you. a gross vehicle weight on 8,000 pounds. Exceeding 8,000 pounds. Not to exceed? Not to exceed 8,000 pounds. So is it or or anything? Um, or? 
Four. 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 Yes, because you want either or. Because you could have a shorter truck that weighed a lot more. You want to factor in both ways. Yeah. I mean, the old. And it was how, what was the pounds again? 10,000 pounds. Well, you said 8,000, as Steve was saying, though. Yeah. Okay. Could you say the average truck right around 7,500. Yeah. So not to exceed 8,000. Can, yeah, I think that sounds good. Can we just, what would an example be of a vehicle that is allowed under B, but not under A? I'm still struggling with the language for A. Yeah. Yeah, but that's where I, it seems like A covers everything. What are we missing? I don't know. Well, I still don't think B allows a truck. I don't. One truck not regulated by A. It's, but, yeah, you, but, but it's, you look at A and what would that truck look like? It, it's just, I don't know, but it's saying one commercial vehicle which is not regulated by subsection A. Right, so it's going to be, be different truck. than subsection A. But it's it, but it's not regulated. The regulation in A is all those caveats. But, but if it's prohibited by A, therefore it's regulated by A, right? A so would it be a truck smaller? But it's saying one commercial vehicle which is it's not small. regulated by A may be parked. Right, it is not regulated right. by A. So if it's not regulated by A, it doesn't follow the, the requirements of A. If it's not being, if I'm not being regulated by these rules, whatever rules you have here, it means I'm free and clear. Right. Well, but is there trucks that are commercial that are shorter than 18 foot? Some well, are. The same Doesn't matter. Regulated by A. A has the regulation of 18 feet. B is saying I can park one vehicle not regulated by A. As I long see. as it meets see. See. owned by park legally, does not exceed the weight capacity. See. Mm -hmm. If it were if it were to be interpreted the way you are indicating right now. What it would say is one commercial vehicle, <laughs> only one commercial vehicle, which is regulated by subsection A. Wouldn't say is not, would say is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, 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 got a, I got a scan of this one and say, I don't agree. I don't agree. It says oh, one commercial vehicle, which is not regulated by subsection A. Mm -hmm. so, so it's not bound by A. Right. So may be parked. So that means it can't be, it can be, it can't be 22 and a half feet, more than 22 and a half feet. And it can't be more than 8,000 pounds. Ten, right. It can't be 10, more than 10,000 pounds. We would take the weight on that, but it, as far as the, the rest of it, it's taking away A. And then the only, the caveats to B are the requirements below B. You're going to lose that with a Supreme Court judge. Okay, but uh, get back to the mayor's question. What do we have an example of like what kind of vehicle that would be that's covered under B? A uh, pickup truck, because it's not identified in A. Okay. See, but to get rid of, get rid of the whole thing, get rid of that stupid argument, just change it to 22 and a half feet. We go down to number three and put 8,000 pounds. The whole thing's over. Discussion is over. Wait, I, I see. Okay. Let me let me try to rephrase this so that I, I understand. <laughs> okay, so A is a blanket prohibition on things that are too big that would never be allowed. Yeah. When you get down to B, that's the thing where it is a you know 16 foot um, short cab that's commercial. Then it says these other restrictions apply. That it's got to be somebody who lives there. Oh. It can't be somebody just parking it in your driveway. It's other restrictions. Now maybe you could. And that's where Steve's saying we should yeah. also change that to 8,000 pounds, or is there a smaller vehicle, commercial vehicle, that would need to be 10,000 pounds? I mean, yeah, it, how do they come up with 10,500? But that came from well, somewhere. Well, up, you know, just picked a random I don't know. Do we, if we drop it, I does think it? You delete that. That that criteria is confusing under B because the structure of this is such that A is the blanket prohibition on stuff that's too big. B says if it's allowed, then it's used in this way. So essentially, we're moving the weight limit up. To right up. So yeah. the excess of 18 feet or, or the, yeah. the weight of 8,000. All this stuff that's blanket restricted in terms of size. And then we weight. drop it down and, and give you. A, a B, we drop, like, yeah, that's, okay that's clear. This. That's actually much clearer. I think that's the way it was intended yeah. to be written. Just, what do you think, Jeff, on that? Do you think it's clearer to have, have those caveats right up front and then like the subset, basically, of it, or the not the subset, but the. 
Um, okay, so what would we change? What would, what would that change? That first that? sentence then would read: No commercial vehicle having an overall length in excess of 22.5 feet, or um, that does not exceed 8,000 uh, pounds gross weight. No, no, or that exceeds 8,000 pounds gross. Weight. Or that, or what was it? Or that. Or that exceeds. Yeah. Thank, thank you. I left out that word. And then you continue. The rest is the same, right? And then so, I, so. I, it is a or and it's not an and, it's an or. It's an or. It's an or. Yeah. It would be an or. Well, well I mean, you could have a shorter vehicle, but it would weigh a lot more. Uh, okay. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Because you got a short, like a short truck or a short food, even a food truck would be, I mean, mm -hmm. it's like it's 8,000 gross vehicle. So if you have a tiny vehicle. Gross vehicle weight? Yes, GVW. Right. Mm -hmm. If you have a small vehicle that's under 18 feet, but over 8,000, you still can't park that there. Correct. Right. Okay. Right. And there's no picture what that would be. But what's the smallest food it. cart that somebody would have? What's the smallest like food? But I think we're already covered because it's it would be a step van, a freight yeah, van. Right. It would be a weight. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. I think. We, yeah. I think that yeah. covers it. So then, Jeff, the other change is that I think we would just delete B3 or something, or at least take out the weight limit under that. Just one ton. Or yeah, we're removing that entirely. Yeah. Our operator of the vehicle must provide proof of ownership. Okay. Well, that should stay in somewhere. We're, yes. The owner of off. Yeah. You need to show the proof of the yes, vehicle. Yes. The first you. sentence moves up into A, though. Do you see so where we are, Jeff? On yeah, I'm just trying. Why was this in here? <laughs> that does not exceed one ton of capacity. Does yeah, we just moved it up to A. With one ton of capacity, you know, that's all the ton. Well, it's like a one ton or a half ton pickup, right? Yeah, yeah, well, like mine's a three quarter. Yeah. But, like, what does that mean? Engine? The village is, is a two and a half ton truck. It's weight. But we just covered the weight. It means it can haul three quarters of it to yours. Yeah, mine, mm -hmm. mine is a three quarter ton truck, but which it exceeds means, the length. Which means that it can carry three quarters of a ton. Mm -hmm. Correct. Do we need that given that we just said? Oh, so if it's right? a, yeah, but isn't that taken care of in the in the beginning? Yeah, we does move. not exceed one ton. We can move that up there too. No, it's a different thing. That's one is uh, the one ton capacity is like towing capacity. We're saying it relates to engine. No, it's what they call like like I said, it's a pickup. It's your it's, it's your, your love the love. It's your suspension right. on your truck. Like okay. I said, mine is a three quarter. Even my half ton, three quarter, one ton, two and a half ton, three and a half ton. It's what they can carry. But it's a separate type of a, a criteria that we could also add if we're moving. And what does that do to the vehicle? I mean, so do we move that up again? How is that objectionable? What do you mean? What happens if why would, we, why would we care the, the, well, how much a truck capacity. can carry as long as Because they're huge. As long as it's not no, over the length and not over like the weight. Oh, I know, as long as it's not 22, more than 22 right. and a half feet or it's not more than... Yeah, why is that, yeah, I see where you're going with that. In other words, right, like, you are really limited. Right, the one thing that's irrelevant. Anyway, yeah. it's like you said, your car truck's two and a half, the, the truck drive, Zach drive runs, it's what they call two and a half tons. And it does it, it's all different in size, right? Or it might weigh a little, a little bit more, right, which case case they don't need your suspension, is what it's like. Yeah. Yeah. So we, why do we care? Can we take that whole thing out then? So that whole first first sentence of number three, we remove. Mm -hmm. What is left then is the second sentence, which does you, not exceed. No. No. The no. owner or operator of a vehicle. The 10,000 no. 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 We've already put the weight limit up top. We already have the weight oh, okay. limit moved up top. Okay. We, we remove the action that we're taking, and I'm going to just say it, and let's let's all make sure we're on the same page, literally. <laughs> um, parentheses number three, we remove the first sentence that is deleted because we have moved some of the language up top into A. Yes. What remains in paren three is the final sentence, the last sentence that says the owner or operator of a vehicle must provide proof of ownership and or vehicle weight or capacity when requesting when requested by the building inspector. I'm fine with that. So capacity comes out, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Yep. Yep. Capacity. And I just note that yeah, I agree with all that other stuff. Yeah. Um just note that capacity also comes in under C again. Um oh, okay. overnight Let's parking of commercial vehicles with capacity more than one time on storage trailers is prohibited. I think what they're trying to do is that capa capacity is often kind of a proxy for size. And 
Yeah, we've already covered. we've addressed it. Right. In the Is it addressed right? in A? Uh oh. What do you what do you uh, now what? I hear C. Yeah. No, that's what we were just talking. talking. That's what yeah. Justin just talking. You brought that because capacity of more than one ton, which means that all the vehicles that are parked on the commercial vehicles are all of these. Well, no, hang on. Let's let's. No, I'm just telling they are. They're, they're, like Messner's truck is over one ton. Robert's kitchen is over one ton. The vehicle for Topaz Bike Shop is over one ton. <coughs> the, the commercial vehicle in the rec center is over one ton. Well, any business that has a step van or a truck to do deliveries so is over one ton. How did that happen with just the delineation of one ton? In a, in a commercial disc, in a it's, business. It's, how the, it's, it's what the truck registration would tell you what it is. No, but I'm, how, how did it happen in this code? Don't know. Don't when in know. fact, absolutely no one is in compliance okay. and can't be because of the nature of By the way, Jeff, yeah, you're completely right on the first one about not regulated. I kept reading it, reading it until it finally sunk through the brain. Mm -hmm. Somebody write that down. That was, <laughs> yes. that was, I was right. <laughs> We're having a moment. I was right. Okay. <laughs> Wait, we have hot tape too. Yeah, exactly. We, no, no, I met for the first time in 2022. Jeff, you can replay the tape over and over again. It's a big day. At your leisure. Okay, so, so I think we need to clean up. We need to clean up C then, because that really doesn't even address what's the reality of the situation for any of our, you know, businesses outside of resident. This is about business districts. Right. Parking facilities. I think if you just remove, remove overnight park commercial vehicles with a capacity of more than one ton. Do we need that? Absolutely. Do we need C at all? Well, let me just make sure we're so parking facilities. Yes, because you have the outside storage of materials, merchandise overnight, uh, or, and storage of trailers. Mm -hmm. So what C is doing is that it's, mm -hmm. it's too restrictive, but uh, if you didn't have, that's the only restriction on size, you know, by using capacity as a proxy for size. That's the only way that we're effectively keeping people from parking um, Big. A semi. Yeah, uh, semi truck, uh, like 18 wheeler. But it's already addressed. Yes, that's right. Yeah, this is business this is, district. Oh, yeah. oh you're right. I'm sorry. I'll take that back. Yeah, we want A and B are residential, C is business. Yeah. So we so, still need some way to restrict it to from having it. I mean, 18 wheeler, right? We could raise it. We could raise it to like two ton or whatever makes sense. Or have a length limit or something like that. But yeah, yeah. just so we're not getting right, like a like wanna... semi rig. Yeah. Okay, so what, and I think I think that's probably the more prudent way to go. I, I agree with you on that. That just, you so know, maybe. maybe Steve increase... could come up with something that says we want to. Look at the stuff right now that's parked in commercial districts. What's yeah. a reasonable size that allows us to say no no 18 wheelers? But yeah, what I can do is I'm going to look at I can measure the trucks like Robert's Kitchen's trucks, the master truck, yeah. and, and we'll and we'll it's look okay. at what we have existing and then cater that section C to what exists in the village. Yeah, today. or or maybe another village has like a 18 they might even have some Yeah, that's what I was that's looking that's at. Yeah, yeah. Alice did a bunch of work around. Yeah, you don't want a semi truck or or right. something like that parking. But they may have language addressing that, and not necessarily. Is that like the number of axles or whatever? Yeah, oh, you mean the number of person? But <laughs> yes, um, I only know that from tall books. I'm impressed you remember the axles. I would remember that. Okay, but I think yeah, if you look into that, that might yeah, be. There might be a way to just uh, prohibit those. Put an actual restriction on it. Yeah. 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 That way it's clear. Yeah. Okay. So my note is Steve to recommend restrictions. Mm -hmm. yeah. For C. Yeah. We're hanging it on you, Steve. Um, that was more complicated than I thought it would be. I know. <laughs> I know. I always didn't, always sneak up. Well, you know. Okay, so we have the action item coming out of that. So. Uh, now we're on item number 20. Removed. Oh, yes, but hang on, Lily's hand is up. Yep. 20 is removed. Okay. Oh, it is removed. We did remove it. Okay, so we're good. So we're moving on. Yes, Lily. I am wondering if we might uh, move on to number 30, uh, even in the interest of time, because I think that's something that we, uh, time is of the essence of, on that one, I think, because we have had so much um, input from our residents that it is a matter of for a grave concern to them. And I would like to see the board take action on it. Oh, the dumpsters. It's, yes, the dumpsters. it's about the, yeah. Yeah, it's about the, 
So I was wondering if you might jump ahead to that one. Yeah, sure. Well, let's do that. For okay. sure. I would, I would suggest we go to 7 a.m. like a quiet time. Okay. What's that? So the, go to 7 a.m. Because right currently, the, you can pick up at 6 a.m. for garbage. I would suggest we go to the quiet times of 7, of 7 a.m. Because you can you can do any any work in the village at seven a.m. seven a.m. Anybody can work. You can yeah. run the siren at seven a.m. So if that thing can go off, then right, you should be allowed to. But if you just that. change to seven a.m. and leave to six p.m. because that way garbage can't be picked up after six o'clock at night. Okay, just change the morning yeah. hour. What do you all think about that? The seven a.m. Yeah. pick up because it's consistent with the rest of our code. how do we restrict code. them from doing work that we allow anybody right. to do? Right, we'll do work for anything that is yeah. not supposed to take place. Well, it's making it consistent with the rest of what's yeah. in our code. Yeah. Any so other like thoughts on that? No, that's I mean, right. I think that's, that's sort of what's up. Jeff, any thoughts on that? The question is, do you want to go later for everything? No. Well, no. Most of no, no, no. I'm the contractor for years. You cannot restrict people from doing work once it's light and it's nice out. It's not, it's not fair. I think we were restricting our own crews. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, hey, it was just a question. So do we want to make it <laughs> consistent though? The other noise, isn't it seven to seven? No, so seven to 11. Oh, seven to 11. No, I, I didn't, okay, no, we don't. Was, I didn't realize it was that late. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so. Seven to 11 is quiet. Okay, so six to. Or 11 to seven So we're saying quiet. seven to, to. 6 p.m. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Yeah, I, I was thinking that that's probably good. The only distinction um, with a, with all the other things that we're, that we're having those restrictions on, um, construction starting at seven, that tends to move. You know, if you've got a house next door to you that it's is not, under construction, yeah. the next month it's going to be done, right? And that noise is somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Whereas with garbage, it's going to be every every, yeah. every day, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like kind of yeah. yeah. And so, there, are, we're going to have to notify these garbage companies. Our call only allows for garbage pickup years. on two days a week. Right. That's one thing I have to see. I didn't even realize when yeah. Austin brought that up. Yeah. Something I have to address with all the carriers because right now they carry they pick up all week. Now they're picking up on Tuesday, and they're supposed to pick up either on Wednesday or right, was it so Friday? Right, so I have to draft a letter to all carriers yeah. to, to let them know our code and the rules. Yeah. And they're going to have to adjust their schedule yeah. or they won't get renewed yeah. next year. Remember, and that's the law that DPW included in their pickups. So with um, with commercial places like in Northfield Common, do they, how many days do they pick up right now? Pardon? How many? How often do they pick up? How many days? I okay. think only one day a week. Yeah, okay. I think it, I think it's one. The officers are quite large. They're back in the yeah. back of Northfield. Yep. Wait. So can we go back to something you mm -hmm. just said before we move on? Um, if we change this to what what does this do to our um, DPW crews who do go out pretty early to get leaves and whatnot? Does it? No, quiet time not, is still quiet time. Quiet time. The still only okay. the only thing that's different in our code as far as times was this. Okay. This mm -hmm. allowed them an hour earlier. Right, but don't, I mean, the DPW crews are out early. They're out well, at 6 a.m. doing leaves and, and um, <coughs> debris and whatnot. And they, I mean, I don't know, we'll have to ask Zach. Actually. Yeah, but well, typically what they'll do, typically what they'll do, um, depending, is sometimes they'll just start in more like, like on Shane, you know, they'll start in a different area okay. for things. All right. And then swing around into heavy duty residential areas a little bit later. Yeah, they're pretty Typical. mindful of, of staying yeah, out of residential districts really, until And we so. don't get complaints. Okay, I we, don't, so. I, we don't okay. get complaints about it either. No, we haven't. And no. that's, again, like what Justin was saying. That's like, they come to pick up your leaves. You're not going to complain if they're there. Yeah, it's like, thank you. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So I just want to make sure we're not hampering their operating. No, no, I don't think we would be. And just real quick, residential pickup and commercial pickup tend to be different because sometimes the commercial needs with food and different things need to be picked up more often. Yeah. Well, they have so, bigger dumpsters. They have bigger dumpsters. We're just saying it's generally it's once a week down in uh, Shane. Yeah, they only go to Northfield once yeah. to empty those dumpsters. Because they got two very large dumpsters yeah. in the back. Yeah, that's not, I not a daily. I the food and all that. No, it's outside. a larger dumpster. And there's a, that's the only complaint we got. Yeah, so but I, I think at least this is helpful that it's just right in line with any with the rest well, of the Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was kind of surprised when I looked at their code and found out they were allowed at six. Yeah. That's I funny. didn't even know that. I just had assumed, honestly. I, I assumed it was seven like everything else. I assumed it was quite a time like everything else. Well, now we know, and now I think this now is a good thing. Now we're changing it. Okay. Great. Okay. That's done.
Thanks. Excellent. Well, we still have a little more time. All right. Okay. Can I have a question? Yeah. So my plan was to do this in one fell swoop. One, one set of changes, one local law. Do you want me to do this ahead? You, you've got the L. Uh, I see what you're saying. Rather than wait for us to get through everything I got, I got to address this one. The LWP out there, don't I? Don't yes, yeah. we can do the two of those together. You mean yeah. so the garbage time and, and the LWRP code, and do those ahead rather than waiting? What's, that was my question. Well, uh, so the cost when we update the code is primarily on the side of updating general code. Is that right? Correct. Mm -hmm. So what I would propose is that, yes, we do some of the things that we've got right now, um, and we just upload, we give the new code to the Department mm -hmm. of State, and we put mm -hmm. a file on eCode yep. that we don't have to pay anything for. Yeah, and she, then that's what we batch up everything to be put into the chapters until we're all done with these revisions. Yeah, no, that's what I always do. She already does that. So we can still... Okay. So, Consolidate. Friendly. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Jeff, that you do go ahead with your changes. We yeah. can roll these in and implement as, as soon as we can. Or we're just going to save on cost by batching. The yeah, I will batch it. I yeah. will go once a year. But you're asking, do you want to? You want us to include that so, in this next meeting with for uh, with the other viewer? So that includes all of the changes we've discussed today. Why wouldn't it? If you can do it. I, if you can I don't do see it. Any reason to do it. our next meeting. 15. Oh. Next week. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't see the two items. Can we pick, can we pick the top three? <laughs> well, we know the trash issue is a big issue. The trash issue. We know the LWRP um, yeah. change, code change. Mm -hmm. big issue. What if we just say, let's do those two and then. I don't I'll see what I can do. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. I'll, I'll do uh, this in the LWRP and I'll start at the beginning of the new changes. And uh, some of them are just straightforward, like, yes. you know, yep. delete, no, don't need, you know, okay. All right. Well, do we want to go back or are there any other things popping out? The okay. others that I saw, to me, just at a quick glance, uh, not every single one, but with the exception of number 21 and 22, I am seeing as a much deeper discussion because it second guesses the comprehensive plan. The changes that are being proposed uh, second guess the comprehensive plan. And so I think that needs an in-depth, I feel, an in-depth discussion. As I said, with the exceptions of number 21 and 22, which seem to be a discussion regarding uh, shifting the administration um, of, from the building inspector to the uh, from the village clerk to the building inspector. That's number 21. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, let's just, let's, while we're on it, let's just talk talk through that. Yeah, that's just basically saying that the applications should go to the village clerk, which they never do. Oh, all the, all the applications, you know, yeah. I mean, the applications come to me. Yeah. yeah I, 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 I thought that's uh, 210, 30.3. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A1. A yeah. yeah. But I think. All of the stuff should be the village belong to the village clerk. Yeah. Right. Should we say both? Well, I would say you know, they you know, both. Can you it know, be the know. village clerk or does any? Yeah. Do it that way. I think as the records officer, it should all be handled ultimately by Dorothea. So even if Steve receives it, well, it does. Uh, well, it does anyway. But yeah. she never sees building permit application. She never sees. Until it's filed as a record. It's you know, filed as a record. It ends up in. Yeah. In the village's archives. And You're at the end of the movie. I'm at the end. I think, but I think designate works. That's probably a better better language then. So it we'll just, say village clerk or designate. We use that designate. Yeah, we have used it before. We've been designated. Thank you. She it was like it's sort of like a knighthood, you know, you designate. Okay. Number twenty-two. Okay. Oh, uh, Should, yeah, hang on. Yeah, okay, hang on. Okay. So it's 210 to 20. 210 to 20. 26. If you want to build a garage, you have to get a variance for height. Everybody who wants to build a garage, you have to get a variance for height. And it seems ridiculous because you can't build a garage under 12 foot tall. It's not happening. Even a single car garage is over 12 foot tall. 
I mean, it still has to go through site plan review, but there's no reason to get a variance for height to make somebody pay $250 for doing something that they can't avoid. I think the reason for that was the rules. I think they just, it, it, I think there may have been a designation difference at one point, but somehow when the code got changed, it just referenced every accessory structure at a 12 foot height. I understand it because you don't want a 13 foot doghouse. But a garage, like I said, you can't build a garage okay. under 12 foot tall unless you're going to have a flat roof. Okay, hang on one second. Lily was speaking. Sorry. Can I finish? Sorry. <laughs> I think it was, I think part of the discussion involved accessory, the use of that building as an accessory structure and that and so that was why the height restriction and last night i'm not remembering that right okay so the, the the discussion then is the distinction between a garage being built and any other accessory structure okay that is really the what's before us correct on correct about what you're saying and you know what you're referencing as well. Right, because if you build a shed, there's a limit on the size of a shed without getting a variance anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, you got 120 square feet. You can't build a shed over 120 square feet without getting a variance. Right. Then you're not going to, you know, the 12 foot height would come in and all that. There, but it, like you said, a garage is still considered an accessory structure. Right. And so we're trying. You're thinking that we, the board, should consider language. That really separates out a garage from what an accessory structure should be, because the very nature of what a garage, you know. Yeah. Just so 14 feet is, is what you're saying is the standard, not 12 feet. No, no. It, it, like a two-car garage is about 17 or 18 feet if you have a 512 roof. In, uh -huh. your, in, in a village, we typically all the roofs are pretty steep, so to match aesthetically, your garage is going to have a pretty steep roof to match, you know, the house. For whatever your house. pitch is. So you can't build a garage and keep it at 12 foot tall unless you want to build it like this. So therefore, uh -huh. any type of garage. Yeah. Is, yeah. Okay, I see. What Even a single car garage with a nine foot wide door in a standard 512 roof is over 12 feet tall. Oh, so this no garage could ever be no built with every, this. Every single one without a various right. every and single time. What was money. the issue with the one on yeah. State Street? Yeah. No time. No time. Right. Yeah. No, there was a height. There was a height issue. issue. No, there was no, no, no yeah. height issue, but they still had to get a variance. They still had to get a variance. Okay. Yeah. Yep. You know what I mean? Even if they wouldn't have put a second floor on, they still had to get a variance. Okay. I just, I don't. It's just me. I don't like making people get a variance for every single thing. It, you know, I mean, it's, every time you have to get a variance, it reflects potentially if it's consistently variances, it means that there's probably something that should be put, put in your code. Yeah, I think if you just add excluding garages, it does that, takes care of no, that whole thing. It, the, does it? The problem is if you exclude garage, so note number two, you're talking about excluding garages from note number two. Uh, as it says, so that, that says no accessory structure may exceed the height of the primary structure on the lot. Was they accept for garages? So then the garage could exceed the. No, the still, no, the garage still has to, cannot exceed the, the height of the primary structure. But that allows you to put a second floor on, theoretically, on your garage. So you could have a garage with a, with a livable, let's call it. Well, accessory dwelling. No, it says no, if you put no accessory structure, may exceed the height of the primary structure of the lot. That still covers that. You can't exceed the, the height of the primary structure down in note number two. That's stand. Yeah. That's if you look under the, the bulk requirement table, note number two, no accessory structure may exceed the height of the primary structure on the lot. So you still wouldn't, you wouldn't remove that. Okay, so you would add to it to say. Or you would add another note or something that says garages are excluded as from the 12 foot restriction, height restriction. Just add a note three. Mm -hmm. Add a note three. But then you could, I mean, so everybody in the village with a detached garage could build at the height of their primary structure. Right, but they have the height of their house. Can't we put a reasonable height? Yeah, I was going to say, just put a reasonable limit. Well, no, why do you do that? Because you can't, you're saying now, what if somebody wants a seven or eight, 12 roof on the ground, then they got to come in and get a, a, a 12. Yeah, how, yeah, you can't right. see the primary structure. What's, what's to, well, how many, how many structures exceed 20 feet? Well, like the one on State Street was a two-story. No, no, no. 
how, how many, well, okay, how many primary structures exceed 20 feet? How tall are, what's the average primary Mine structure? Does. Yeah, well, you've got But the, I have a bar. Well, yeah, we yeah. already can exceed the primary structure. I know, I'm, I'm just trying to get it. There's got to be some sweet well, your primary structure is way over 20 feet in the Any two-story house is mm -hmm. probably 30. Right. So I'm, I'm asking, is 30 feet or 29 feet a reasonable height for a garage? Because they could go right up to one foot under, well, it wouldn't be approved. It would never be approved. Because of think of the need to from HPV. So it's yeah. Well, yeah. well, yeah, but you don't want to. With the drinks, you don't, don't, you don't want to say you're tall. My garage isn't a barn, though. That's what, like, so those of us that have barns, yeah. the drinks is a good example. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are barns that we use as garages. Yeah, mine is the second floor. But oh. we're talking about building a new garage. Right. right. Um, so, I mean, I hear some of the concern is that people would automatically build it to as tall as their house. house. But it's we also want that. something that fits in. So, yeah. like, you don't want something atrociously. You know, I think the architecture would be avoided in a really bad spot. Okay, the first note under this building height shall be determined in feet, while the visual scale or appearance in height of the building shall be determined in stories. How helpful is that? Well, I know, nope. I know what it's getting at. Um, okay. Right, so you can have a pretty facade that's tall, but it's not necessarily another story. Right. Um, so the volume is less, <laughs> the living space is less. Is that yeah, what they're clear. getting at? Because so I think it's clear. Let's, I, you know, getting back to the garages, which is where we're, I mean, mm -hmm. What does the board want to see? You know, I mean, do you want to see uh, a garage that is barn-like? I mean, and, I mean, not, not that it's a bad thing. I'm just, do you want to see a garage that's barn-like and see a garage that's garage-like? How about this? What if we were to put some type of realistic limit of height, and then you still have to come in for a variance if you want to go up higher on your property? Mm -hmm. You know, in other words, we, we know 12 feet doesn't work. I mean, we get that. You could so, go, uh, exceed primary structure or. No, not exactly. No, that's what they're afraid of. Cannot they're exceed they're primary structure or 25 feet, whichever is less. Right? Can you know, something like that. that doesn't allow for. I was eight. thinking 14 eight. feet. Yeah, I know. The garage, the, the, garage on State Street, the garage on State Street is about 24 feet tall. It's a, it, they put a second floor on it. It looks like a second home. But they did. They got approved and she had the second approved. story uh, on her and it looks beautiful. Because they went for a variance and they got the approval. Okay. So, hang but on. I'm saying, can you put a capsule in that height should not allow for secondary use you know like living space or any way to make yes the storage is supposed to be storage space strictly speaking so if it's 12 feet now why is it 14 and a half or 15 feet acceptable because then you can't have a second story in a garage this lady made us an art studio on yeah, second floor okay room. but she went for a variance the architect she got a variance right well she got a variance for height yeah right so which is what we do we want that mechanism yeah to be put in place that you have to come and get a a variance on yeah. So then basically we're, we're saying we want a variance for every garage. We're back to that. No, we're, back, we're right back to that. I don't, I don't think it's fair. Well, I, I think if you set it a higher height one. Maybe 16 feet. I would go with that a higher. Yeah. And then, then you know, right. that's anything. That's what I'm saying is the mayor had a good point, I think, is that you want each and a <laughs> well, 16 feet would allow you, on a, you uh, on a 22 feet wide garage, which is a standard two car garage, 16 feet would allow you a 612 roof and still stay under the 16 foot, just under the 16 foot limit. I'm more comfortable with that. And then anybody, anything else has to be a very, you know, some other, okay, a little more height. But, right, it has to come. And, and then if you want to put a variance story, you've got to get a variance. Yeah, I, I think that's a way at least to flies in the face of the comprehensive plan. Anything else does, yeah. because we that was all worked in the mm -hmm. comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Bob. <coughs> yeah, mm -hmm. um, Robert Corby, Senator Washington. Okay, okay. Why not just add some language? Because I think what you want to avoid is having the tail wagging the dog. So why don't you set whatever you know maximum you think is appropriate, and then add some language 
but you know must be in scale with the house subject to review by the HPV. Which they would review anyway. Right, right. So I mean it's already in there, but no, just to but if you, re reinforce the language. But if you right, yeah. if you put it there, then the applicant knows right up front that they're not going to be able to build a skyscraper in the backyard. Well, they'd have to go for a variance for a skyscraper. <laughs> right. <laughs> Standard height for a story and a half is what? Standard height for a story, story. and a half yeah. is um, 15, let's see, 15. eight and a half feet or eight feet plus uh, for the framing. It's going to be about 11 and a quarter inches plus the plywood, so a foot, nine feet. Nine feet is not, a typical story. Not for a garage, though. Well, I for any construction. So oh, we're going to put it here, the 22 oh, foot wide garage. Yeah, 15 foot. Six feet. Feet. Well, roof on it, you're going to be about 15 and a half. 15, feet. yeah. It'd be 15. Oh, yeah. <coughs> height wise. But I, again, the thing you really want to consider, and, and why you don't want to, you, you don't want to uh, be too strict in the dimensions, is because depending on where it is in the village. Yeah. You know, if you're up on right. Courtney Circle, the proportions are going to be, going to be really right. different than if you're on Monroe Avenue. Right. I mean, the the character. Yeah, you're going to have the the still goes back to the HPV no matter what. Yeah, yeah. No right. matter what, it goes before So we're the trying HPV. to solve a problem that you need, an, in addition to it already going to the HPV for design considerations and the planning board and other things, they're having to get a variance, which is additional cost and time for height to go above 12. So that's the problem we're trying to solve, right? It's not right. that they can build it without any review. No, they can't. Right. You're still going to get HPV review for yes. style and all that right. stuff anyway. Right, right. Which you is just have a note that would, you know, underline the purpose. So it's yeah. clear. I hear you. Know, what's your purpose? Or yeah. just raise it. And reinforce the HPV yeah. review. Yeah. 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 I, I don't like the HPV trying to control that much. The height. Height. Yeah. Well, I mean, either way, it's reviewed by them. Either way, well, I know. they're reviewing it. But well, the, if we do the 16, does that help? Yeah. 16 feet, if we take it up. To I would just feet. add an open for 16 feet, a garage, garage a maximum you know, of 16 feet, and then you'd have to get a variance if you design it that it's going to be over that. OK. Because so any single car garage mm -hmm. is going to be under that. At least for a single. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it's all subject to review by the other board. Right. Right. So if they need to put a different roof that. I just hate to say that. They would definitely do the visual compatibility. Sure. Because that's what you're going to get a variance for a height for a garage. You already got to get a site for it. You got to get it. Oh, yeah. So this is just removing one little. Well, payment. I'm trying to remove the. You know, we're double. Basically, it's. They're doing the site plan. They're doing the review anyway for the variance. Right. It's all happening anyway, and you now it's just saying 16 feet, at least, you know, you've got the HPV review. You don't want right. to go through the entire variance process. How many feet? We said 16. 16. 16, and that will take care of a, of a single person. Right. right, and then if they go to a two-story, they got to get it then for it's Anything, and, and anything like that. And it comes into where Lily says, so they don't build some uh, Which I like. I like. That was a good yeah. point, so for a single. Okay. Does that work? Does really? that work? What do you think, Lily? Just taking it only to 16, yes. anything gets a variance. Because right. either way, it's reviewed always by our HPV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. So we could just add another note three. Yeah. Yeah, and I've got to figure out how to structure this thing. Okay. So the action item is Jeff will create language. Okay. We have 15 more minutes. Can we touch on another one? I think will be quick. Yeah. Number 25, the change to the notice. This is the public hearing. Oh, yes. Okay. That, I've been trying forever in a day to get to five days notice, because 10 days is just such a lockup. It locks someone's into a month. Which section are we on? Oh, oh, 25. Item number 25. Time. Yeah, but of the code, what part of the code are we changing? I think it's all over in the code. It's a public hearing notice. It's, yeah, it's, it is. Public hearing. it's in a number of places, isn't it? Yeah, it needs to go to five. Oh. <coughs> isn't it? I thought it was in. Okay, so 18911. Oh, no. Hang on. If you think I can find it, because mm -hmm. I looked at it just a couple of days ago. It just makes our lives a lot easier. I would cross off number 27 on your list, too. Hang on. Let's finish 25 first, okay? All right. Just give us one sec, okay? Um, oh, 210.30. 210.30. Which one did you come up with? 
21031. So yeah, and there's a two, what number are we at? Twenty-five. Item twenty-five. Uh, the notice for public hearings being changed from ten days to five days. It's not regulated by the state at all. No. 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 It's, no. it's, it's in some way. I thought it was. Where it is regulated by the state is within the one point two, right? Five days. Five days. Well, okay. So like, more than the state. Yeah. Wherever it's regulated by the state, it's five days. Yeah. This yeah. makes it We're makes longer. it a lot easier for a lot of our. It'll action. streamline it. Also, getting things out between the paper and. Because it's yeah, I mean, because you lose that ten day count when you got because it comes off of we pub, when we send it to the paper, Lily. I have to wait five days or seven days for it to be publicized. Then I got to count ten days from there. Okay. So yeah. it's it the really lengthens the okay. time frame for yeah, anything. It's, it's a pain in the Tush. Okay. All right. Check that one off. Okay. We're good. I, I figured I knew the others were more complicated. And that was easy. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm probably okay with that. I'd like to see if there. I need to think about it a little bit more, just because it's a public notice kind of thing, and I want to see if anybody comes out and if the planning board says, for example, we really think it should be ten days. Most like most municipalities do five. I think we're the only ones yeah, who do ten. Yeah, just it's. Okay. I mean, in other words, it's not uncommon. I, yeah, I didn't yeah. mean okay. you know. Doesn't mean we couldn't do something. I, yeah. I agree with Lily. Twenty three and twenty four should be saved. They need. Yeah, that's that's pretty meaty. Bigger discussion. Yeah. Yeah. And I gotta be out of here in a few minutes. So. Um. And twenty six is that part of that? You know. Yeah. We should. We, we should take a look that's at that. That's, that's, that's another one. one yeah. Too. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's comp plan territory. Yeah. Okay. And so that's what yes. I'm on. Yeah. Yeah. Plan territory. Yeah. Twenty three, twenty four, twenty six. Um, down the road. Yeah, what about 29? About we, we talked about we said cross 27 off. Oh, 27. Yeah, cross yeah. 27. It's gone. That's uh, history. 29, we talked about this. So, ones that reoccurring events. Oh, do they need to come before our. This, this is another board. thing I've said to Jeff with the non municipals, and I'm sorry to jump in. No, please, I no. We're all working um, on it. I don't have a clear definition what should have a non-municipal. I think we give so many different things a non-municipal and that they don't necessarily need yeah. a non-municipal because mm -hmm. it's just like a safe haven to throw them in. So I'm not clear. And that is something I said to Jeff because I think there's things we give a non-municipal we shouldn't be given a non-municipal. And then we give things to the town we call them a non-municipal, but actually they're a municipal. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. It's very confusing. Does that have to do with liability or that the issue? Shouldn't. No, it shouldn't have to do with liability. Insurance is insurance. But I mean, they have to show yeah. the insurance to have their event for using the. Right, uh, but we yeah. have no we that that was never it. issued a non-municipal from St. Louis Church for their garage sale. Yeah, that's never, never. But we've issued a non-municipal for the plant sale. Yeah, what? Yeah, see, yeah, we had this discussion a while back. Yeah, and like if there's an estate sale or something. Yeah, there's nothing. It's. And it, I mean, and, and I don't know. Uh, the estate concept of the estate sale is they are using our sidewalks in a queuing or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, and, and, and they're parking on our streets mm -hmm. in a uniform. Or I can't think of the well, What about St. Louis? They park, they're all over. That's huge. Never issued an ambulance? Ne before. Never. They've never come in for one? The Women's Club sale. Yeah. They don't come in for a while. Yeah, we'd need to sort it maybe a bit. You know, I, I just feel consistent. like we don't I don't have clear Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the action item out of that is to clarify it. So that's <laughs> definition of yeah. That's yeah. Clarify it. So it's really there, but there are two separate. There's the things that happen every year, which is like the Christmas. Right. Christmas yeah. That's one issue, and yeah. then there's also okay. clarify non meeting Yeah, there are two separate things. Right, and then there's some clarify recurring okay, events. If we're good with them having a non municipal, do they need to come every year, or do I need if to? Nothing is changed. Nothing's, nothing's changed. changed. Nothing's changed. Would it be an administrative same. action? Right. And that way, if anything does change, then they would have to. Then it comes right from the board. If there was a complaint, then it should come back. Yeah. Like, let's say the homecoming parade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the same every year, or we literally parade. They're the same every year. Nothing changes. Mm -hmm. I'm just bringing it in. It's something I could 
We can do a little negative like from from the board that they reflect they got the non-municipal blah blah blah, and we can still update the public one and put that notice out for them. But these the, whole the people they get these permits don't even come in front of the board anymore because it's just me for method. So I can just let the board know that they applied and got their annual permit. And if I have we have a complaint or something's changed in that permit, then I'm back for yeah. the board. So at the time or the new rule changes or right right. Okay. Oh, he's we can, he's, he's, he's in a zone. He's in a zone. <laughs> All right, I'm not gonna. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sorry. Well, that's okay. No, no, no. no. <laughs> You're zoning. Uh, no, I heard. No, I heard. Yeah, well, you are zoning, aren't we? <laughs> oh. I'm just wondering about adding both to. We're talking about non-municipals and some things that fall under short-term retail. I think the new code that we adopted yeah, for short-term short retail. Term. I'm I'm wondering okay. if since some of those are recurring, if we added language to both of those that says that. Um, you know, upon review by the village board, permission shall be granted for this event and subsequent annual occurrences. Um, uh, for which there are no changes. As long as there are no changes. Yeah. Or, or what about complaints? complaints filed? Or complaints. Or complaints. Or revocation by the board <laughs> with discretion. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. That kind of covers it all. Yeah. yeah. It's a good idea. As long as we also. Get an update when there is. Yeah, there. require that the board is alerted to all the municipal yeah, well, use permits. That's part and parcel of your duty anyway, right. in terms of your reporting back to the board. Yeah. So you yeah. would, yeah. You would let us know of your action. Report that this, this permit was mm -hmm. issued for, you know, the farmer's market again. Yes. So that we know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I think that helps. Yeah. I just think it needs to be cleaned up. And my mm -hmm. first concern is. Are we issuing the right things now? Municipals are we not giving them? You know, like, whoa. Yeah. yeah. There's one more in here that's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. Hang on, I just want to, before we go, I want to make sure we're closing this out and we understand what the action item is before we move on. Hold your thought, please. Is Jeff still in the zone? No, I'm still trying to catch up again. So we're going to do the non-MUs, short-term retail. Um, Recurring events, recurring events, and annual events, and the approval by trustees. And the annual recurring occurrence approved. Clerk. And then or designate. Or designate. Or designate. Unless changes violations. So when someone files a complaint, is that considered? Okay. Yes. Okay. No, it's uh, the for revocation. I'd, I'd like to leave open the possibility the board decides yeah. that this is no longer changes. acceptable. If there's a, a you know zone violation change or something like that, I guess that would be Okay. Hang on, I don't know if Jeff caught what you just said. I just yeah, want to make sure. I was Jeff just saying, so we've got, you've got the two carve outs. So complaints, changes, and a third thing that I was thinking of is if, I, I don't know what this would be, but if there's some kind of a, a, a broader land use change in the village, we no longer want that event, you know, is there a way that the board can say that permit is no longer valid? Well, revocation by the board. Revocation by the board. I, I, I don't just know to what cover it, would be. Just, yeah, to, just for like a whatever circumstance, yeah. basically, yeah. if we need to revoke it. Yeah. All right. So looking at revocation board, that be in the best interest of the public or the building. Yeah. Of course. It would be. <laughs> Should be. Uh, what are we saying, Jeff? I'm looking at the uh, non-municipal use. Mm -hmm. And it is. For uses other than normal public use, certain non-municipal uses may be authorized by special permit issued by the village clerk after approval. So it's it's any use that uses the sidewalks or roads mm -hmm. in a other in a use that's other than normal public use. Mm -hmm. So that's why we did the estate sales. That's why we do sidewalk sales. Mm -hmm. That's why we do anything that is going to use 
the streets and roadways mm -hmm. in other than usual fashion. Um, so I think that's pretty clear. I mean, there's a certain amount of interpretation to be applied. But if you're queuing on the sidewalk or the roadway for the St. Louis sale, that's a not probably should be a non-municipal use permit unless we waive it because it's a religious use. Oh, but that's something I have down the notes that we maybe want to review that those circumstances yeah, and bring it back. And I, I well, mean, that's that's it's never been issued that I'm aware of. I don't think it ever has. They've never come to me for an unusual one. It's never been prior. I mean, that's that's a use that is normally related to a religion. I mean, between um, okay. fundra fundraising mm -hmm. for their mission and their goals is, is a normal mm -hmm. use. So it probably would be a religious use that we probably should have municipal oversight over. So that would be just a decision that the board would make. I mean, how many other of those do we have that we're not? What about ready? selling the Christmas trees at the dairy because it's an accept? That's a, that's a, Dorothy and I talked about that the other day. So what? That's not even. That's it. That's nothing. It's in a retail it's district already. You know. Okay. And it's a retail use. So what are we? So I don't know why we bother doing an, an, MU, an MU for that. I don't know why we would need it. I think what we need to do is go through all the that's that we the events. That's in well, I think it should that's be okay. a starting now. The next time you that comes up because it's regularly cycled, mm -hmm. we'll talk about and look at all the three of us. Wasn't wasn't the Christmas tree a short term retail instead of yeah, yeah. went short term. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it doesn't shouldn't even be that yeah. because it it's be. in a retail district. Yeah, it's just excessive. You know, we're just. But it's so not by the accessory code, it's not a legal accessory use. The trees. Yes. But it's a, that's the problem. But you had a different you had you said you something different. You had to change the accessory use code in order to make that tree legal because of the proximity to the primary structure. Is that what that is? So we had okay. a different talk about that though. Jeff, we yeah. brought up something else. If, Jeff brought up something okay, else. Okay, the dairy owners, let's say they decide to sell Christmas trees, they are allowed to have retail sales on the property. They could do it. Well, right. they, but it's an accessory use to the primary, and by the definition of that in our code, it's not allowed. That's why we had to do short term retail. Mm -hmm. I think it's <laughs> temporary use. The first permit they got, weren't they? Temporary use, and then they switched. Yeah, so yeah. that it was a switch. Change. Yeah. No. Code change, and it, and it made that not valid. Right. Right. Okay, thank you, Steve. I'm planning for a meeting again. That's right. Oh, boy. More fun. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks so much for your help on this, Steve. Especially this one. They want the third convenient store in Hamilton. Oh, oh, my gosh. Wow. Can you give them a Mediterranean restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, we'll trade one. <laughs> we'll have the player to be named later. And for Ann and Oh, boy. Hey, thanks again for your help. Yeah. Have a good evening. Okay. Jeff, are you in the zone there? No, I just, I'm not, I'm not sure what she said was a session. Well, let's, we can, you know, can look at that. I mean, we're heading right at six o'clock here, so I think it's our break time. And um, we have our action items for everybody. I guess, can, can we just recap the action item on the last one? Which, um, the um, the not municipal use of short term retail. So, is Jeff going to look at uh, a possible annual provision? Yes, um, I have an annual provision once there has an initial approval approval by the board. Um, and Jeff wrote down some of the language, you know. Justin's language was that yeah. may approve, or whoever said it, may approve. No, it was Justin. 
the uh, permit and future permits. Well, so it, it's, up to the board. Change, or... it's up to the board of trustees whether they want to approve mm -hmm. future permits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we were just going to take a look at some of the things that we already have we're to see where they really fall. Yeah. Like yeah. There's no right now. I don't feel like there's rhyme Right. Okay. Like okay. Okay. Well, that's going that's going to be controlled by the. I think that's controlled by the language of our code. Right. Well, let's let's make sure we really understand yeah. that, and maybe there needs to be clarification. Thanks. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So that's. I think so it's, think I think it's going to be easier just to do a strict application of our code. So everything. Yeah, we got everything. When everything comes, when the next one comes in, we got to look at it. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, just going forward because then it will take care of this, this particular. Yeah. 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 Yeah.